destroy them yoke where you won't have to live under the bondage of anything. And it's the same way with people in our family. That's right. If we'll get filled with the Holy Spirit, that anointing comes on the inside of you. Mm -hmm. And when you speak, God will deliver. Thank God will heal. Amen. God will set free. Amen. Amen. Let me help get y'all out of here. 15 minutes after. I got, give, me, give me a couple more minutes and we're going to get out of here. Let me read one more thing. Uh, uh, listen. I got one more scripture. And I'm going to get you out of here. And God blessed them. And God said to them, Be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowls of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I give you every herb and every um, seed bearing herb. And not, so, so God supplied everything to Adam and Eve. Let, let, let's run real quick to Psalms 8. Uh, I'm going to read this. Because I do, I believe this with all my heart. You need to know how much God loves you and what you mean to God. Yeah, Psalms 8. And we're going to start around verse. We'll start with verse 4. It's a familiar verse, Church. Mm. It said, What is man? Do y'all know what you are? You're, you're three, you're, you're triune, you're spirit, body, and soul. You're spirit, body, and soul. Amen. Your spirit was created for you to fellowship with God. Your, your mind and soul was created for you to, to function in this natural world, your senses, your five senses. Your physical body and your senses are for this natural world, but your spirit, man, it's that part of you that, that contacts God, that, that, that gets in fellowship with God. That's the part of you that's like God. So he said, what is man that thou art mindful? That thou art mindful. What do the word mindful mean? It means to remember, to recall. He said, what is man that thou art mindful? God, God, why is it that you even consider man? Why is it that you're mindful? Y'all know how blessed we are that God, God is mindful? God thinks about us? The Bible talks about how that Jesus came down through 42 generations and he died for us. So, so God had us on his mind all the time. So don't never think. Some people say, well, God, why you let me go through all this? Why I have to go through all this pain? And, you know, then, then he said this word, I'll never leave you, nor will I forsake you, but lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. I know that sometimes we, we, God permit us to go through things in our life. Amen. But, but, but he, he's still there. Amen. The evidence that he's still there, you made it through it, okay? So just in, in case you think God was there, amen, if God was there, you would have died. So don't never think God wasn't there. He was always there. Amen. That's why we still, and sometimes I ask God the question, I say, God, sometimes I go through things and I ask God, how can I still have peace and go through this? Amen. And sometimes I can't figure it out. What, what I'm doing with peace? Ain't no way. I'm supposed to have it, but because he's on the inside of my heart, he just carries me through it. And sometimes you said, some things we just won't be able to understand. Think about it. Some of the things you went through, you shouldn't have made me do it. Amen. No, I Amen. But he counts you. Yes. Amen. So listen to what he says here. So, so the word mindful means to remember. Oh, man. Ooh. And think about it. And also, now this is interesting. It also means to mention, not to, to speak of. I, I just can imagine this. Really. Now, I'm just saying, this is my, this, you know what I'm saying? God sitting up in heaven. Talk about us. Setting up a plan how he was going to say amen. Amen. Jesus. Because, you know, you, you got to, you, I mean, for what God had done for us, he had to have a plan. He had to, he had to, he had to have, I mean, he had to sit, I mean, and we cause we know he God ain't like us, but, but he always got a plan. But, 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 but God, he was talking about us. He, he remembered us. He was, I mean, he was, we was in his heart. He mentioned you. He was probably talking to the angels. Because, you know, the Bible's talking about how the angels, they're kind of jealous of us. 
Because we, we was created in, 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 in his image and in his likeness. I almost say this, but you, you, you know, like when you read the book of Enoch, uh, uh, you, you, you know, you find out that a, a lot of the angels, were, that they were jealous. And that's why the Bible said in Genesis 5, they, they wanted to be like us. So guess what they did? They came down and they took women and, 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 and they wanted to have children. They wanted to reproduce. They, 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 they wanted to be like men. They was jealous of man. Because man was God's sons. We were created to be his children. And they wanted, they wanted to be, the angels want to be like us. And we hollering, we want to be like the angels. Oh, they so precious, they so great. The Hebrews one called the angels, they work for us. Yeah, they powerful. But they actually work for you. Hebrews 1 said that he has given us ministers and angels to minister for those that are what? Heirs of salvation. Because we are heirs of salvation. Because, amen, we, we have inherited the kingdom of God. And the angels work for us. Amen. He's given us some that work for us, not all of them. God, you know, they work for God, but he has given us angels to work for us. Isn't God awesome? Amen. He don't just create, but he gives us what we Everything that he's giving us. Wow. It's, it's where we can rule it and, and, and be like him, be like that. We, Elohim, the Most High, we're to, to, to have dominion. We're to have, you know, his presence and his power in our life that we can function like he functions. You know? I, I was reading something, and, and sometimes I'm going to throw some stuff out, but you ain't got to take it in. Some, and I'll tell you what I was reading out of. And, and sometimes I like to read different books, but, but I'm a, you know, but some things I'm going to say, you, you don't have to take it to heart. But I'm going to tell you, like I'm going to tell you, I was reading out of the book of Enoch. And I was reading some of the different books by Thomas and, and John, some of the second books that I mentioned in, in canon scripture. But, but I found out that a lot of times, who, I think it was either John or Thomas, they wanted to kill him because he, he was teaching a lot about the kingdom of God. And they was, the religious leaders was angry. They was, because, you know what? The religious leaders didn't want him to teach about the kingdom of God being on the inside of man because it would destroy their religious system. You know, think about this. The Catholic Church. And I'm just going to say this. Now, you best you know about it. I'm just saying this. They got all this stuff, purgatory and all this. You praying for the dead. Do y'all know all that stuff was created to, for, for, for money, the purpose of money? You paid to pray somebody out of purgatory, to pay them out of, pray them out of hell. You can't pray nothing out of hell. Right. They can't either. That's not even biblical. That, that was one holding place, and that was the bosom of Abraham. So these religious systems, amen, they, they, they want to put fear in people, amen, so they can build their big old buildings and, and their religious organization. But Jesus actually preached against that stuff. He said, I didn't come up to, come, come to, to build buildings, but I come to build the hearts of people. Because if you can build a big church, and don't get Jesus in the heart of people, you haven't accomplished nothing. Amen. Amen. Go ahead and build a big church. I could have became a Baptist preacher. I could have, my, my grandfather was the well, was one of the founders of the Baptist Association. I, 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 in my family, they called me and they said, man, we heard you preaching. Come over here with us. We helped you get a church. We helped you get, get all the education you need to, to do ministry. Just, just come over here with us. God's a victim. I didn't call you to be traditional. I didn't call you to that system. I don't want you to take no part in it. I want you to go out and do what I called you to do. Amen. And how many know that? That ain't what it's about. It ain't about no religion. And I'm not coming against no organization, but I am telling you this. If you're not filled with the Holy Spirit, you're set up for defeat. Amen. The enemy will defeat you. I live that life, so I know what it's about. If you don't have the kingdom of God on the inside of you and recognize who you are, the devil will destroy your life. Amen. That's right. That's right. Amen. If God, amen. If God just created you for heaven, won't he just kill you? True. And take you home. He created us to have dominion on the earth. Matter of fact, just in case you didn't know it, God don't want you in heaven. That ain't your home. Right. Read your Bible. God created the earth for man. Heaven was not created for you. And then re read your Bible. When Jesus come back and get us, the Bible said he going to set his kingdom up on the earth. There's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. And he didn't say you're going to be in heaven. He said you're going to be on the new earth. And you're going to rule and reign with Christ for a thousand years. Uh, so, so many of us are trying to get to heaven that we, 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 we're not living. I 
call it a spirit of, the church got a spirit of suicide and death because every time it gets hard, they think about him. Lord, take me home. I've heard preachers tell me, I hope the Lord come and get me getting so bad down here on earth. I, mean, I, ain't, I, ain't, I ain't think about this earth. I don't, I mean, death can rule through the earth, but how many know if the hand of God is on your life? Death can't touch you. Can't nobody touch you. He did it to, now just imagine if he did it to Cain. You remember Cain when he sinned and God put him out the garden and Cain came up to God and he said, he told God, he said, God, but if you send me out there, they're going to they kill me as soon as they see me. And the Bible said that God put a mark up on Cain and God told me, he said, if any man touch you, Cain, he said, that I'm going to recompense them seven times. Now just imagine this. God going to bless a murderer. And tell them, if anybody touch you, I'm going to So when people tell me that Adam and Eve was the only two on the earth, I, I can't believe that. Because when they departed out of the garden, the Bible said they went into the land of Noah and said, and, and then Cain knew who his wife was. So there, there, there was other people on the earth. I, I you know, so, so you got it. And you remember the Bible said when God created Adam, he, he called their names Adam. He, every living being was an Adam. You know, and we look at it as, you know, it's not singular, it's plural, read it. And one day I sat down and I started reading, I, I realized, so when God was talking about Adam, he was talking about the woman too. <clears throat> Later on, she became Eve. He gave her a name. And the Bible called her the mother of all living things. So we all was Adams. Different is, I always say this and I laugh when I say that. God just split the Adam and took her out. But she still was in his image. She was still in his life. And, and, and today I just want to encourage you. And that's what we're really talking about, walking in the image of God. you got to see yourself the way God sees you. Amen. I don't care what you act like, what mistakes you made. you got to know that you've been created in the image of Elohim, yes. the Most High God. And most of all, that you can see that you're born of this word. Yes. Okay. Um, um, um. Let me read the last of this, and we're going to close out on this. What is man that thou mind for him? And the son of man that thou visit him. Wow, God come down to visit us. I mean, the Bible said in St. John 7, they talk about how that the word became flesh and it dwelt among us. And we beheld the glory as of the only begotten son of God, full of grace and truth. Amen. God loved us so much, he came down to see about us. Who is man that thou come down to? You, you come down to visit him. He did it in the Old Testament, didn't he? He came down on the mountain and talked to Moses. God came down to see about us. But they were scared of God. How I many know most people are scared of God? Anything that you don't understand, you fear. They said, Moses, won't you go up and see God? We don't want to sin. The Bible said they was afraid. They was afraid of God. How I many know that God loves us? He ain't gonna hurt us. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. If God wanted us dead, he could have killed all of us a long time ago. Yes, God. But he loves us. Yes, Lord. Amen. Yes, okay. Let's go ahead and get out of here. For that, listen to this. For what is meant that thou mind for him, and the son of man that thou visit him? For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels. Actually, when you see the word angel here, it's not in the original language. And I just said that to you in Genesis, where when I said God, it's actually he's created in a little lower than Elohim, not the angels. So Adam was created a little lower than the Most High God. When you get a chance, look it up. Uh, for thou was made a little lower than Elohim and has crowned him with glory and honor. The Greek word for glory is dosa. It, it means weight, God, God's presence, God's power, God's glory was set up on that. I heard a friend of mine preach this. He's he from Warriors, Alabama. Uh, uh, Robert Butler, he's a great, great man of God, powerful man of God. And he talked about how that God's glory was on Adam to, 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 to God. You, you could see God's glory. He was so transparent to God's glory was just all over him. He, he, was, he was in the very image of God. And God's glory and God's honor was up on Adam. 
And how many know that's what the Holy Spirit comes to do to us? It, it comes to restore God's glory, God's presence back up on us. The, in Psalms, it talks about God glorifying us with the meekness of salvation. How many know that, that God will glorify us with his meekness, with his kindness, with his gentleness? Amen. And, 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 and that's his glory. That's his presence that comes upon man. God wants us to, to carry his glory and his presence that when people see us, they ought to see the very presence of God in our life. I remember when I got born again and I went back to see some of my old friends and, and I walked in the midst and they said something different about you. You don't look like the same person. That's a glow on you, man. You, you, you ain't the same person we knew years ago. Why? Because God said his glory. God took the death out of me. He took the sin out of me. He took the unrighteousness out of me and he said his glory back up on me. How many know that's what Jesus had to do? Restore the glory back on your life. So that you can walk in fellowship with God and so that the glory of God can be up back up on your life. Amen. And so that you can live in fellowship with him. You know, I always tell people this. God never really wanted a preacher. He never really wanted a church. But he had to redeem it. All he wanted was fellowship. The church, the church age is going to come to an end. And all God really looking for is fellowship. I, I, I want to walk with my sons. I want to walk with my daughter. I don't want no mediator. I don't want nobody in between us. I want to, just like I did with Adam and the God, I want to just come and walk down here, talk with them, fellowship with them. I, I, and, and understand this. God, if God, God's God, he could come down here and take over there by himself. But because God has to operate in the boundaries of his own word, he gave us dominion. God has to do whatever he's going to do through us. Well, God can come down here and raise the dead. If he had, he, he could have. But every time God did something in the earth, he always had to have a man. Because a spirit can't function in a natural world. And you see it, unless your spiritual eyes are. But in that case, Adam was dead spiritually. He lost all fellowship. And the Bible said God drove Adam out of there. Do y'all know what the word drove in, in, the, in the Hebrew means? Well, I, I heard a rabbi say this. But then I went and looked it up. And, and when people say something, I hear it. But then I said, let me go research it myself. Because he could be lying, uh, just, just saying something. And I'll just be honest. I said, let me look it up. So if I ever say it, I want to have the evidence and I have the confidence to say it. And so I actually went and looked it up. And it actually means to divorce or to separate from. So when Adam sinned, God divorced him. God separated. The Bible said God drove him out of his presence. He was separated from God. They was no longer in fellowship. So our relationship with God was like a marriage. We was one with him. But when man sinned, that fellowship, that oneness, where we come from, from in the New Testament, where we get our word communion from, uh, Cononius, fellowship, oneness. The fellowship was broken. Now man is out here by himself. In the end of it was death. But God loves us so much that he remembered us and he came to redeem us. Jesus came to restore us back in the image and the likeness of God and back into fellowship with our Heavenly Father. For verse 5, this is what we're going to close out right here. For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Thou made him to have dominion of the works of thy hands, and hast put all things under his feet. Amen. Wow. So today I just want to encourage you and let you know that God has created you to have fellowship. God has created you to. And I know it sometimes it sounds crazy, but he created us to be like him. Amen. Because you know to the natural mind, some of this stuff I'm saying to y'all, most people go, but Pastor Bob, you just overstepping the line. But when you study your Bible, you find out that you have been born of this word. And that God is your father. He's your daddy. He's your Abba. He's your, he's your father. And that he loves you. And that you have his, you know, you have his spiritual genetics. 
So that means you don't have to die. You don't have to live in sickness. You don't have to live in disease. Jesus actually died so you can be healed. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You know? And I know we're wrestling with this mortality. We know death is in the human seed. But, but, but if we have received what Christ has done, we don't have to walk in death. We don't have to walk in sickness. We don't have to walk in disease. We don't have to walk in defeat as born again believers. Amen. That's right. But we can walk in the image of God yes. in his likeness and in fellowship with him. We can love the way he loves. Yes. Amen. Jesus said, the works I do, you shall do it, that, that I do, you shall do, and you shall do greater. Amen. Yes. We're supposed to walk in dominion. Yes. We're supposed to heal the sick. We're supposed to raise the dead. That, 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 that's the authority of the church, is to reconcile those that are lost. Yes. If they're dead, we're supposed to raise them up spiritually. You, know, you might not raise him physically, but spiritually. But that's a part of him. He said, we'll raise the dead. He said, physically. He said, we'll raise the dead. We'll heal the sick. We'll cast out demons. Tell you get scared when you start talking about casting out demons. Well, preacher, you're going too far. Some people don't believe there's no such thing as demons. Oh, they just attitude. They didn't they narrow it down to attitudes and all this kind of stuff. Rationalize everything. But I'm here to tell you, demons are real. Yes. Attitudes are real too. Mm -hmm. You live your life thinking demons ain't real. <laughs> I did too. I thought these folks, them Pentecost folks, I said these folks crazy. Talking about demons, casting demons out of folk. I ain't no such thing. I ain't never seen one. But then I got filled with the Holy Ghost, days. <laughs> oh my God. And all of a sudden, my eyes started opening up. And see, when you can feel the Holy Spirit, it also makes you spiritual. Mm -hmm. It opens up a spiritual world mm -hmm. to you. And so I started growing in the Spirit, <laughs> fasting and praying. I would go to churches and preach. People be hollering, demons hollering out of people. All of a sudden, you 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 you, you praying for people, and you say, God, I thought that only happened in, in, in the movies, exorcists, and, and you laying your hands on people, and, and deliverance, they being purged, they getting set free. I'm saying, I'm saying, hold on, where all this stuff come from? I, I didn't think this stuff. I was raised in the Baptist church. I, I ain't never seen nothing like this. Amen. And as long as I was in and wasn't filled with the Holy Spirit, I lived my life and didn't know this stuff was real. Right. But now I know. Because sometimes I'm sitting at home, the angels come in and talk to me. They fellowship with me. They minister to me. They, they, not, and, and I'm just telling you, you don't just, if you just experiencing demons, then you need, to, you need to reevaluate that. Because you should just be seeing demons. The angels of the Lord, you should have ministry from angels of the Lord. Amen. When it comes to demons, you ought to be casting them out. Right? right. Amen. People, I, I get weary of people that tell me everything they say is about a demon. Amen. You ought to have fellowship. Jesus ought to be talking to you. The Holy Spirit ought to be talking to you. Amen. You're going to run into the devil every once in a while, but you ought to have fellowship with Jesus too. Amen. 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 So we appreciate y'all. Thank y'all so much for coming. Amen. 